How are you friends? This is Shukesh Bunik and you are watching Gadgets Portal. Today I am going to make an in-depth review on the new Samsung Galaxy Chat B5330 and you must have already seen the unboxing and hands-on review. If not then check that out first. Now I have used this device thoroughly and I feel that this is a very decent device and the harder the design and the feel of the device is very very premium. It looks like and also feels like as premium as Galaxy S3. And the most interesting part here is that it comes with the latest touches Nature UX over ICS which is available only on the Galaxy S3. Though there are some optimization made on the Nature UX to make it suitable for the smaller screen and also the slower processor. And the price of this device is quite attractive. It is only 8500 Indian rupees equivalent to 160 USD. Now you are getting this 3 inches display with basic QVG resolution and also a hardware QRT keypad which is quite nice. I have used it for a number of times and I liked it a lot mainly because of the hardware keys here are quite easy to type and they are actually quite raised from the base and the good thing is that you will get a very nice feedback from the keys which assures you that you have pressed the right key. Now regarding the display though it is QVJ but it doesn't feel that much bad and with the price tag of around 8500 rupees you can't actually expect nothing more than this. You are getting this Galaxy Note style lock unlock mechanism and you are getting this quick launch apps here and as you know if you want to launch any app like the camera app over here you have to just press it and slide it to the screen. This option is quite handy, it saves time and mainly the camera app is quite necessary for taking candid shots. Now let's get back to the lock screen and show you the other options on the screen. Here is your timing and date information and you can also access the notification panel which is quite nice and you can directly go to your notifications without unlocking the phone and you are also getting this nice brightness control and some necessary information on the notification bar and also you are getting a bunch of sliding shortcuts and you are getting this Wi-Fi, GPS, sound on off, screen auto rotation, then notification on off, mobile data on off, Bluetooth and also the synchronization on off and also the settings shortcut and the notification panel is actually quite similar to the Samsung Galaxy S3 without the brightness control because this phone doesn't have any ambient light sensor. Now as I've mentioned before it is running on the new Tatu's Nature UX and you are getting 5 home screens out of the box. And the OS as you know is Android Ice Cream Sandwich and I will show you the version later and I was actually quite curious to check how ICS is running on this very small screen but because of the optimized touches UI it is looking quite nice. Now if you pinch on the screen you are getting an overview of your home screens and you can add up to a total of 7 home screens and you can also customize them, rearrange them and also delete them. And this is a pretty typical feature of touches but don't forget that this is nature UX which is far better than the UI you are getting on the Galaxy Y or Galaxy Pocket. And I am going to show you all of it. Now here on the dock or app tray you are getting this dialer, contact as well as the messaging. Here is the S menu and here on the home you are getting a bunch of widgets and applications like the weather widget over here and you will get your weather updates on the screen live and you can also update it whenever you want to get the instant condition of the weather here is your weather forecast and as you know you can download hundreds of widgets like this from the google play store and customize your home screen as you wish and as you know you can also download launchers from the google play store to change the whole user interface though i personally prefer to stick to the original ui because it is optimized for the phone and a lot of functions may not work on the launchers and regarding touches UI it may not be as graphically intensive as the Sony timescape but it is the best user friendly UI I have ever seen on an Android mobile phone. Now the Android version as you can see is 4.0.4 and let me show you the storage and the RAM information. And I suggest you to watch the unboxing video where I have shown you the actual RAM and the internal storage before installing an application. Now at this moment you are getting 123 MB free and 322 MB used so total of 445 MB you are getting on this device which is quite decent for an entry level device like this and you are also getting this device memory of 1.6 GB plus 500 MB that is around 2 GB. Now let me show you the dialer and as you can see there is a considerable lag actually though the overall performance of the phone is quite fast. Now you can use both the on screen keypad as well as the harder keys. 
The on-screen keypad looks quite neat and clean. Let's turn on the speaker and the overall call quality of this device is pretty decent. The ear speaker produces pretty clear voice and though the loudspeaker is not that much loud as you can hear. Now you're also getting these handy options over here which is quite nice. And here on the keypad you're also getting a direct messaging shortcut. Now the bar over here could have been here because this is a pretty large device and accessing the bar on the top is quite problematic. Here on the logs you are getting both of your messaging as well as the calling history. Here is the option for favorite contacts and here is the contacts. And as you know you can slide right to call and slide left to directly message to the contact which is pretty decent and pretty nice feature of TouchWiz UI. Now here is the messaging window and there is no on-screen keyboard option on this device as it features this harder keyboard which is the most attractive feature of this mobile phone. Now let me show you a demonstration of the keyboard. While typing on a harder keyboard is full of fun. Well I have accidentally pressed the home key and I have also failed this problem previously. Let me show you again. Well one of the main benefit of the harder keyboard is that it saves a lot of space on the display. The display here is only 3 inches like the Galaxy Y but as there is no on-screen keyboard you are getting the full view of the writing window which is quite nice. And my overall writing experience on this hardware keyboard is absolutely good. Actually it feels much better than writing on the on-screen keyboard that is on the glass actually. And though the keys look a little bit congested but the central part of the keys are quite elevated. And typing on a hardware keyboard after a couple of years I am actually feeling quite satisfied. You can also attach multimedia to your messages to send it as an MMS. Now you are also getting a chat on shortcut on the keyboard just like the BBM shortcut on Blackberry phones and this key over here is actually a shortcut of a specific application and you can set it manually as I have set it to Angry Birds. So if you write a lot of messages or write on Facebook a lot of times that is if you use the keyboard frequently then this is just perfect for you. Otherwise there are some other models in the market with larger screen like the Xperia Depo. Now there is a very bad thing about this keypad as the keypad is white in color when the backlight is on and if you are in a very bright lighting condition then the text on the keys are not that much soothing to the eyes though the backlight is not purely white. Now if you long press on the numerical keys it doesn't show you the numericals which could have been a very nice feature of this keypad. So overall the hardware keypad on this Galaxy Chat is quite decent I will give it 8 out of 10. Now if you long press on the home you are getting your multitasking option and you can just slide them to left or right to end them and you can also directly go to any application just by clicking. Now you are getting these options on the option menu and the edit page option is actually just like the pinch option on the home and you can also create folders on the home search google and also check the settings. Now if you long press on the home you are getting this window and you can set a wallpaper for your lock screen as well as the home screen. You are also getting your apps and widgets and also folders and page option. Here I have created a folder now let's move an app shortcut to the folder. And if you just press on the folder you are getting your contents and you can also remove it and delete the folder just like this way. If you have used Android before then this thing should be very familiar to you and as this is an ICS device you are getting a very nice preview of the preferred location of your applications. Now as you can see I have loaded a bunch of widgets on the home and you can also resize them just by press and hold and just by sliding the borders and as you can see you can resize your widgets to any size though this may not be applicable to all the widgets. The dock or abstract over here is also customizable and you can do that just by press and hold and dragging them over the home just like the other applications and you can also rearrange the applications on the dock just by this way. So the applications on the dock is just like the applications on the home. The only difference is that they are fixed throughout the home screens. Now you can also add folders to the dock which is a very very handy option. It will actually save a lot of space on the home and make the home look better with widgets only and you can also access to your favorite applications and just by one click as you can see. Now this phone also supports live wallpaper let me show you one. Now here is the Koi free live wallpaper and it supports multi touch let me show you that. 
and this phone can support up to 2 point multi-touch as you can see. Now I have loaded the Season Z live wallpaper and the speciality of this live wallpaper is that when you scroll on the home the live wallpaper actually moves horizontally but on this latest version of TouchWiz this kind of wallpaper actually doesn't work. I have also seen the exact thing on the new Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 tablet. Ok now let me show you the applications on this device. Here are the widgets and here you are getting the applications. Now along with the typical Google applications you are also getting some exclusive Samsung apps like the chat on over here and the Samsung apps over here is actually an app which will help you to choose the best applications for your device. Now this phone also supports FM and you are also getting the voice recorder, messenger and here you are getting the Samsung Game Hub along with the Samsung Quick Office. I will upload a dedicated video showing you the full demonstration of the Quick Office and as you can see I have also installed the Flash Player without any problem. Now the rest of the applications are downloaded by me and I will play all of these games and also show you all of these applications in my later videos. Now here on the apps menu let me show you the customization options. In the option menu you are getting a very nice option that is the hide applications. You can hide specific applications from others and this feature is sometimes useful. Now you can also arrange your applications in the grid view as well as in the list view and here is the alphabetical grid view and I personally prefer this kind of alphabetical sorting because it makes it quite easy to find out any application and the alphabetical list view is the most user friendly because you are also getting initials of your applications on the right now here is the list of widgets you are getting and as this is an ICS device you are getting a live view of your widgets which is quite handy now let me show you other options you are getting on the option menu here you can uninstall your applications from the apps menu here and as you know you can't uninstall pre-installed applications unless you root the device you can only uninstall the downloaded applications now let me show you other options you are getting the edit option where you can rearrange the installed applications just by this way which is quite easy and very very useful sometimes so overall this Samsung Galaxy Chat is a pretty decent device. You are getting ice cream sandwich on board on a budget device which is quite unlikely and the whole user interface is also quite smooth and very very fast though some applications actually take some time to open but this is not an issue when you are getting such a beautiful device under 8500 rupees now to speak about the touchwiz ui in this device this ui is most probably the simplest and most user friendly ui on any mobile phone in the market and the customization options and the unique features i have shown you in the video are only available on the very premium galaxy s3 as this galaxy chat sports the same touchwiz version as the galaxy s3 so if you are looking for a very beautiful and Android device with a hardware keyboard then this is the phone for you. My only concern on this device is the camera quality and also the loudspeaker quality and the display is also a little bit pixelated. I will cover these stuff in the second part of this review. So this is the end of the first part of this review and I hope that you liked my real in-depth review. I have tried my best to give you the best reviews so if you found this video helpful then don't forget to subscribe to Gadgets Portal. You can also visit my Facebook page facebook.com slash gadgets portal for the camera samples and obviously check my channel for the second part of this review video where I will show you the music, the internet and obviously the camera on this device. So that's all for now friends, see you in the next video, bye bye.